I have talked about these enveloping tissues. Um, and so what you see here on the left hand side is sort of a blown up connective tissue of inside a muscle. So you see mm -hmm. endomysium, uh, which is labeled with an E and epi uh, perimysium, which is labeled with a P and then the epimysium uh, with EP. Um, and this is interesting because the, I was talking about control of muscles and the muscle spindles are actually um, attached to the perimysium. They're, they're gliding in these E areas, so in the endomysium, but yep. they're attached to the perimysium. And so we need to have good gliding so that the muscle spindles can actually move freely and do their job and convey what stretches on the muscle, etc. So that's the reason why this is important. Um, now I'm going to hop over that. Um, part of why that is important is that the muscle fiber doesn't, um, not the muscle fiber, the muscle spindle doesn't only have alpha mo motor neurons, but also have gamma motor neurons. And these gamma motor neurons will, other than that they keep the spindle taut, will be able to recruit about 10 times more fibers to one nerve impulse. So instead of one nerve impulse just recruiting one fiber, you can then um, amplify that right. and recruit another roughly 10 further without expending another nerve impulse. So it's actually giving the brain a much easier job to do. So we can accept that that's a fact. Why is it important because from your perspective? Because when we don't have fascia where, when our fascia can't glide, the gamma motor neurons can't perceive what's going on right. and they can't recruit yeah. further muscle fibers. You know, I was saying <clears> we need <throat> fascial glide in order to be able to recruit muscles. That's our yes, main yeah. problem in, in diastasis recti, that we can't recruit the muscles because the densification in the fascia doesn't allow glide. Right. That, and that's what we're looking at. Now, this is area, these are areas of fascia that are connected to the diastasis recti. So if we look at the left-hand picture, we uh, see this white triangle um, that's over the xiphoid process. This is where the abdominal fascia will blend with the pectoralis fascia. And so um, if there are densifications in there, we can't recruit our, neither the pectoralis muscles nor the abdominal muscles well. And then you think about all of the, your viewers who um, treat families, young families, they will know of patients where the mothers will say, oh my, I've got shoulder pain after birth. And it's probably because you're carrying the baby so much. And it's probably not because they're carrying the baby so much. It's probably because that fascia doesn't move well and therefore the shoulder is struggling. Right. Yeah, so that, yeah. that this is much more. Yeah. And then to give us a quick look at the back. Yeah, so this is an image of the thoracolumbar fascia. So yeah, just to see what we're going to assess. And part of what we're going to assess is the, whoop, is over the iliac crest. So the attachment point of the thoracolumbar fascia over the iliac crest and then along the erector spiny um, so that we can actually um, help our patient to recruit those muscles better. Okay.